Hi. We're standing outside the final, final near Lombard and Lion in San Francisco. And this gentleman, I think, came down here to see the Blue Angels. What is your name, sir? My name is Ralph Barheit. Are you from San Francisco? I am. You I are? I live in, the, in the Richmond. This is uh, October 6, 2012, by the way. Did you come down here to see the Blue Angels perform this afternoon? Is that why you're here? Well, that yeah, that's one of the reasons. We came down to watch Oklahoma play Texas Tech, and then we went down to the Yacht Club to watch the Blue Angels and to watch the America's Cup, which was very exciting. So, so you came down for several events. Today. Exactly, and, and it was a great afternoon. Are, oh, Fantastic. Really? Afternoon. Yeah. What did I mean, you enjoy the most about this afternoon? Well, that's hard to say because I'm an OU grad and OU did well. They won the... Uh, OU meaning? Oklahoma University. Yeah. And the Blue Angels were fantastic. They put on a really good show and we were right down on the water so we saw them flying right across in front of us. Wow. That was spectacular. We were outside on the deck at the Yacht Club right on the water and it was wow. fantastic. And then we got to see the America's Cup, the Catamarans race, and that was really spectacular. Hey, what's going on, guys? And that's Arnie. He's the owner of the Final Five. Yeah, the America's Cup, first they did match racing, so it's just two boats racing each other. And they did a fleet race, and in the first fleet race, one of the boats pitch pulled. And what that means is the whole of the boat digs into the water, which stops the boat, brings the rear end up over the top, and they all go crashing into the water. Those boats go really fast. Sometimes they get up to 40 knots, which is very, very fast. Was, so, this, was this really, was the crowd really worried about this? Yeah, oh yeah, everybody's yelling and, and you know, oh my God, and all and that kind of stuff. And that's called, they, they pitch pole? Pitch pole, right. The other way is capsizing like this, because they're catamarans. So, pitch pulling is it's a catamaran, and the lower hole goes, digs into the water, and the skipper doesn't get it back up in time, so it digs, it's submarines, that stops the boat, stops the forward motion of the boat, and the back comes up over the top. You know what, did that happen because they were going, because of the speed they were going? No, just because of the whole digging into the water. But the really cool thing was then, after those races, after the fleet race, was the final match race. Uh -huh. And the guy who was driving the boat, the pitch boat, he was in the final race against the New Zealand boat. His boat was the Oracle boat from the USA. And he really pulled this great stunt at the beginning of the race and um, made the New Zealand boat come to a stop. And he got off 30-second lead and he won the race. Wow. So he won the champ He won the whole weekend of match racing, which was fantastic. The US boat won. Jimmy Spithill won. It was just a great day. And then we came back here just to see uh, Nebraska play at Ohio State. It looks like now we can't even get in. This bar is owned by a, a Nebraska graduate. Yeah. So all the Nebraska fans in the Bay Area or in San Francisco come here to watch the Nebraska team I play. Didn't know that. Yeah, it's really something. They're very, very rabid fans. <laughs> and they just fill the place up and they, they go crazy. I was surprised to see um, Arnie, Arnie yes. uh, leave, actually. <laughs> and the only reason he did it because he has this new puppy and the puppy had to pee. So he's. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to leave. Okay, my final question. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the Blue Angels? Oh, the Blue Angels, right. The, the, the Blue Angels are fantastic. And, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about it. I think it's a waste of money in terms of all the fuel that, that they spend in doing this, this show of American force. And I don't think we need to show American force like that. I'm not a big fan of American force, even though I volunteered and went to Vietnam. I think that we don't need to fight all these wars. I think that we're doing some very bad things. We did bad things in the Middle East. Uh, we killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people, and I think that's wrong. And so but, you have mixed feelings about yeah, the Blue Angels. But if you watch the Blue Angels, you watch those guys fly, you see just an incredible skill. Those guys, those pilots, are fantastic. They're athletes, I mean, and they fly at several hundred miles an hour, five feet apart. Uh, five feet apart? Yeah. Six planes together? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and 
and and they do these maneuvers together. It's you know, it's not just that they fly in a straight line or anything. They curve, they go away, they come together. They're they fly fantastic. up in the air and straight down at the bay. Yeah, they do that yeah. and they do these. So they've they've tapered, they've tailored their program a little bit so that they do a little more star bursting into the into the sort of the city so you get to see the starburst a little better and it's really cool and the other thing is is that as much as i don't like warplanes warplanes yeah that, those are warplanes yeah they are an, inf an incredible testimony to the genius of man i mean building something like that that flies like that that performs like that they fly in these tight little circles they make these tight turns over the bay that are just incredible at high speeds. I mean, the, the, those, those planes are phenomenal. So, so that's why, you know, this is good and bad. But um, do you think they could be used for something else besides war? No. No, no those I are don't, war, don't, war machines. They're war planes. Yeah. You know, they, it, they carry one passenger, the pilot, and then they carry a lot of ordnance. Rockets, machine, Gatling machine guns, all kinds of uh, yeah. instruments of death, death yeah. and destruction. So that's what they're built for, and that's what they do. Um, now, could we take that technology and do something else with it? Sure. Uh, and the men that dream those things up and design those things and build them, could they be doing other things that are more beneficial to mankind? Yes, I believe they could. I, I don't know what they are, but they could. Yeah, sure. I mean, our going to the moon, they got tremendous amount of technology out of that. Yeah. Computers, the whole, so well, much. I and think, the I thing think you're going, right about this. Going to Mars, yeah, we, we got these, this little thing on Mars now, and I think that we could have diverted money and, and research into other areas that would have been more beneficial to all of mankind. Um, well, and America would show the leadership in doing that, and we, we could have done it, but we didn't, so... Well, maybe we will. I'm putting this on YouTube with your permission, and maybe somebody will watch this that says, hey, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's turn this into something that is life-giving. Well, the thing is, is that Americans, America's a funny place. A lot of Americans who would be very much in favor of that, and uh, would be very happy if we did that. Yeah, I'm one of them, but there are millions of others. But you, you know. went through the Vietnam War. You understand about war. Yeah, and that taught you something. It, it yeah. did. It yeah. did. And then war is just yeah. not a good thing, and I think it's unnecessary, especially. Iraq and Iran, Afghanistan, those wars, we did not have any business there. Yeah. Uh, they just were totally unnecessary. They were contrived, um, and I think they're sort of a black spot on American history. But we made a mistake. Do you think that they were for oil? No, I don't think so. I, I, I know there's a lot of sentiment about that, but and, and maybe they were, but I don't see it that way. I don't quite understand why we did it, um, but I do think that it was it, it was perpetrated by some greedy and evil men. And we have evil men and good men, so you know, you they know, held the day. Thank you so much You're for letting me interview you, and and for your very intelligent, sophisticated, and layered observation of well, what, what went on here. I think it's very, very helpful. Thank you for the compliment. I, I think that most people in San Francisco are very much like that. Layered, intelligent, and yes. sophisticated. And this and, is a great town. And they see all sides of the They do. They, they, they see more. Than, it's not just a liberal place. Yeah. It's, it's a very... People here are astute and awake. I agree, and I love living here for that reason. Thank you so much. You're welcome.